This is the last prophecy for tonight. And this is for those in Kenya. Susan, I don't know whether you are on the line tonight, you and Lucy, and the rest of you, and Christine. There are many Kenyans who are my partners in Kenya, in Europe, in England, in Canada, a lot in Canada, and here in the United States. This is what the Sovereign Lord says concerning Kenya. Kenya is opening the door and has already opened that door for evil spirit to walk freely. The same thing that is happening in Nigeria is happening in Kenya. And that is why Kenya and Nigeria are brothers and sisters. There is a warning for those of the Kikuyu tribes rallying some tribes on the other side and the Luos rallying some people to the other side and to the Akasis. Listen carefully, Kenyans. What has been done in Kenya some years ago has provided an opportunity for a curse to deposit itself in Kenya. Kenya is going through a curse, just like Nigeria is going through a curse. It is what people have done, not even what they say, what they have done, that has produced and invited a curse to Kenya. You cannot do a clean business in Kenya. Why? Because it's like Nigeria. Everything, they need a bribe. Uncheck appetite for power and for money and for wealth has brought about a congregation of demons, high-powered demons, to Kenya. This is what I have been told to tell to Uhuru and the rest of you and Odinga. Number one, you disrespected somebody that is godly who came among you. Who is from among you? I won't say the name. A man that is godly, that is part of the Kenyan nation, was disrespected. He sensed it. That was why it took him a long time before he went to Kenya. I'll stop there, but let me go to something else. Those who have ruled Kenya have used Kenya. The nation of Kenya is a prostitute that has been used and dumped. Everyone in position of government has come to cut their share and go. And possibly, if they can pay their way through, or if they can rally their way through, they will come back to repeat the same thing. What I saw about Kenya is fire. Nigeria own is bloodshed. Kenyan own is fire burning the nation. 
Nigeria is all bloodshed. Because the Hausas, the Igbos, and the Yorubas are not going to want to work together. So blood going to flow. In fact, those of you from Nigeria, I saw people killing leaders in Nigeria. They were killing everyone and families who have tested powers. They started killing them in Nigeria. I saw it. Rene remind me to, 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 to talk about seeing people killing business class professors and those who have tested power in Nigeria. I want to do a short video when everybody has gone from the conference call. I'm going to do a short one because they need to hear it. They need to see it. Kenyans, listen, your nation is ready for fire. Not fire for good, but fire will burn Nairobi. Fire will burn major cities. Villages will be wiped out because of the quest, unchecked appetite for one tribe to be in charge. Some people want to go back to the time of, of a footstep. Moi. Arab Moi. But that's not where the solution lies. The solution lies in this. The Kikuyus are not like you guys are the most brilliant people on the face of the earth. But the Kikuyus are good at one thing. They are go-getters. Whether in business or in the pursuit of money, both they are men and women. Lowers are good at working for government or working for other people. They are the academicians. Those are the Obama's tribe, the Obama's people. And the rest of the tribes rally around the Loos and the Kikuyus. I'm talking of the Tahitas. I'm talking about the Kambas. I'm talking about the Kisis. I can go on and on and on. Rally around these two major factors. The Kikuyus are top class businessmen and they know how to use, they understand the power of money. And they know how to use it. But that is the very thing that is not associated with good governance. You might be a good politician, might be a good businessman, but that does not mean that you should not understand the concern of the other tribes. The very money that you think is the reason why you can subjugate the others you can subdue them. Is the very money that will be there and you'll be running for your life. Because Kenya is divided into factions, especially the Luos and the Kikuyus. Even in Europe, in America, I mean, there are more Kenyans in England, in Europe, than in Americans here, than in American Canada. This is what the Sovereign Lord told me. Just as he told me about Nigeria. This is the solution. Each region should produce a president. Because if you say that Kenyan, just like Nigerians, should go ahead and produce somebody, who cares where they come from? One territory is the fox. They've learned how to have smart the rest. Because the rest are stupid. They are like buffaloes. You chase them. They don't know how strong they are. And they will start running. A buffalo is stronger than a wolf. But the wolf knows how to take them down. 
buffaloes are stronger than lions. And the, and the, and the lion's family, the tiger's family, the cat family, but they know how to take these big, these big boys and big girls down. Why? Because this other one, the buffaloes do not know the power of working together. They are selfish, individualistic. Let the next four years, a Kamba man or a Kamba woman, not just men, Kamba man or Kamba woman should be the next president. Because there is no discipline in Kenya. The wolves are too many. The lions are too many. They will destroy the head. They will prey on the rest of the people. The Kikuyus, especially. I love the Kikuyus because of their business. They are the business class and the political class. But that's the very thing that Lucifer will use to touch. Not God. Lucifer will use that to touch, to burn Kenya to the ground. Let me tell you something. If you are a politician in Kenya or Nigeria, Rene, remind me to say this when I'll be doing the appendix uh, a video for Nigeria. If you are a politician, a businessman, a pastor, a bishop, whatever you are, a professor from Kenya or Nigeria, I'm going to give you a warning. Do not go to which doctors to look for power. Call me. Because I know more about your nation than any witch doctor. If you want power, call me. I'll give it to you. You doubt me? Come and try me. And if you have witch doctors, if you have witch doctors who have been doing juju for you guys to stay in power, it will be broken, it will be destroyed. Let me also announce to those of you who are politicians, whether you are an Islamic politician or whether you are a Christian or a traditional worshiper politician and you've been going to your own people for them to make, to make concoction for you to stay in power. Death is coming to which doctors in each of these territories. Because the first thing God is going to do to save Nigeria and to save Kenya is he's going to wipe away and kill. He's going to permit many witch doctors to be wiped out and their families from the face of these two nations. Also from Uganda and Tanzania, they will be wiped out. I'm not going to do the prophecy of South Africa tonight. It will be tomorrow night. So Rene, remind me. After, after we will have two, two programs tomorrow night, Saturday night, it will be a normal program about uh, Miracle Seed, and then there will be prophecy for South Africa. It will be tomorrow. It's about time. Every African country is going to receive a prophecy each time we meet. Then we will go to Europe. We'll go through so that they know where they stand, so that they will not say that God did not want them. Those of you from Tanzania, Uganda, Kenya, Nigeria, the spirit of death had been sent against witch doctors in your territories in your nations, especially those who are collecting money from wicked politicians. You are killing people to keep people in power. It's coming to you. Listen carefully. Kenyans, listen carefully. Uhuru is a good man. 
but who is a politician. How I wish that people do not lead you astray. Because you are going to pay a price for what you did not participate in, but what you love to be in. There are people who hate the Kenyatta family. I am warning you, do not hate the Kenyatta's family. Leave them alone. Outsiders are trying to spoil that family. And I know that family has already acquired enough wealth. So listen carefully to what I'm going to say tonight. Allow Ralph Odinga to be in power at least for four years and let things cool down in Kenya. Allow a Luo man to be in charge. Luos are no betrayers. Because that's what you guys are saying behind the scene, and I'm hearing it. I'm not living in Kenya, but I know what they're saying, that they will sell the nation. And I want Luos not to behave like what they are saying. Because the Kikuyus have chosen the nation of Europe they want to do business with. This is not going to help Kenya. It's even worse for Kenya because they have prophets who hears for other nations, but they cannot hear for their own country. Just like in Nigeria. Or in America. We are prophets who can prophesy against everybody else, but they cannot hear prophecy about themselves and about their own nation. Let a Luo man be in power for four years. After that, give it to a Kisi man. Give it to a Kamba man for four years. Why? Because the African nations are not yet as disciplined as other places in Europe. Go and look at Switzerland. It's one one year tenure. Switzerland is made up of, of the, uh, what do we call it? Uh, the little country, backyard towns of Italy, of Germany, of France, and the rest. And they become a nation. One one year. And you guys are going there to go and put your money there in Swiss banks. You all should be ashamed of yourselves. African leaders, you should be ashamed of yourselves. Nelson cried out for this. Nelson Mandela, nobody listened. What is this guy's name? Kofi Annan from Ghana has cried out. The African elders have cried out. Nobody's listening. Until when the fire begins in Kenya. And then they will start looking for nations. So America and Europe, Britain and Canada is not in a financial situation to be helping African nations anymore when they start killing themselves. You've been given opportunity to raise your own country, provide for your own people, help your people to provide for themselves. You don't want to do it. The Europeans are not coming back to do it for you. There's a prophecy that is coming for India. You guys should get ready. It's coming. If the appetite for control of power, control of government, if the appetite for control of money, land, etc. is not checked, Kenya will burn with fire. Go and see the fire that is burning in California right now. That will be little to be compared to the fire that is going to burn in Kenya. And remember, we don't have 
better fire departments in Africa. For Nigeria, it is bloodshed. For Kenya, it is fire. But it will start with the bloodshed before the fire. What I'm telling you is what is going to happen to Kenya and to Nigeria. Do something. Say no. Those of you who have tested power, walk away from power. Those of you from Nigeria and Kenya, if you have tested power, resist trying to still be in charge of power. You don't know everything. Look at what has happened in Gambia. One madman, Yaya, he thought he knows everything. Trump says he knows more than our general. <laughs> it's terrible. Look at, Yaya has fled Gambia. He's gone. This nation was before you came. You only have a few years to be in power. Why are you trying to make things complicated for your nation? Why not be on the right side of history? Every good man and woman of goodwill from Kenya send this broadcast to your fellow Kenyans because Blood and fire is coming to Kenya. And a few people are going to make the rest of the people suffer. Let me say this to you. For those of you who are going about the internet and going about the television, telling people how God is going to intervene in Nigeria, in Congo, in Uganda, in Rwanda, in all these places, in South Africa, you are lying. Let me tell you, God is not going to intervene because he has been sending you guys people to warn your nation. When it begins to happen, God will not be there. God is not coming to intervene in Kenya. Kenya is going to deliver itself. The mess you put yourself into it's not God who is coming to take you out of it. You're going to pay for it. That's the word of the Lord. And thus says the Lord, if Kenya and Nigeria refuse to listen to my word and change what has been spoken tonight will happen. It will come sooner than you think. Good night. If you want to make contact with my ministry, so that you know this is not a joke, call 316-665-4400. I am coming. I'm coming to visit your nation. <laughs> and I'm not coming in peace, says God. I'm coming to visit your nation. If you like, be as smart and be as rich as you want to be. But I'm coming to visit your nation. It's not going to be funny. And there is no preacher. And there is no witch doctor. And there is no diviner who can deliver your nation from what is about to happen to your nation. Good night.